So if you're building a racing game and you want opponents to race against you, you're going to need a AI system. In this video, we're going to build an AI system that controls your vehicle. If you're using a uh, input manager in your vehicle controller like this one, in here we're going to need a enum like we have in controller that allows us to choose between the drive types. So let's build that. So to build an enum, we're going to say it internal enum driver. Now the first driver is going to be obviously the AI. The next is going to be keyboard. And the last one is going to be mobile. If you want this AI to work in mobile devices. Below that, so you're going to need a serialized field driver to reference the enum and a name for the driver. Now if we save this in our editor, we should have a drive type. Now let's build methods for this driver. One is going to be the AI. I'm going to call it AI drive. Next is going to be keyboard, keyboard drive. And the last one is going to be the mobile, mobile drive. If you have this function, this one gets the input from the keyboard. So we want to cut that off from here and, and paste it into our keyboard. And in our fixed update, we want a switch statement that checks the driver. In the switch statement, we want to ask if the drive controller is equal to the drive type dot AI. So case one is going to be driver dot AI break. Second case is going to be driver dot keyboard. And the third case is going to be driver dot mobile. All right, this is our simple switch statement. For now, we're using the keyboard. We don't build the AI function yet. So in our case driver keyboard, we just want to execute this function. Now let's save it and let's try it. It works normally. Okay. That's what we want. Next thing we want a track builder that builds waypoints around our track. So to do that, I've created a folder, a empty folder. And inside I'm going to create a new script and I'm going to call it track waypoints. Now to demonstrate that this track waypoint is going to work is first I'm going to need a empty game object. I'm going to call waypoints and inside I'm going to create some empty game objects to indicate our tracks. So right now we have three game objects that hold just the transform. Now I'm going to apply this track waypoint into the waypoints and I'm going to open it. Okay. Now in the track waypoints, we're going to need a array of waypoints to build a, uh, track from start to finish. To do that, we're going to declare a public list of transforms, which is equal to new list of transforms. We're going to call it nodes. Now, instead of using fixed update, like we use basically everywhere, we're going to use on draw gizmos. Now, the very first thing we're going to need is to load in the transforms inside this nodes uh, list. To do that, we're going to declare a transform path and then inside the path, we're going to load in every child object that is inside this waypoints folder. To do that, we're going to say transform array of transform path called path is equal to get components in children, the type of transform. Now to load in from the path into the nodes, which is a list, not a uh, array to load in from the path inside the nodes list, we're going to need a for loop. First, we're going to say nodes is equal to new list transforms. And then we're going to say for loop. So once you build your for loop, we're going to say nodes dot add path in the index of I. Now to see if this all works, we're going to head on over to our game. Now we have a kind of an issue. If we see our element zero also gets the parent object, which is the waypoint. And we don't want that. So a fix for that is that our for loop needs to start from one. So just say the array starts counting from one. Okay. So now we only have the child objects that are inside this uh, waypoint object. Now let's draw a line between these points. To do that, we're going to need a, another loop. This time the I needs to start from zero. The I has to go to the nodes dot count I plus plus. Now we're going to need two vector three variables. So one is going to be for the current node. So current way point, which is equal to nodes in the index of I. 
dot position and the other one is a vector3 previous waypoint in the vector3 dot zero now we need a check to see if we are in the node zero so we're gonna say if the index is not equal to zero we're gonna tell the previous waypoint is equal to the nodes in the index of i minus one dot position now once we have all these we're gonna draw a line between the current and the previous gizmos dot draw line now this takes in two parameters first parameter is going to be the previous so we write in previous and the next parameter is the current waypoint now this draw line gizmos takes in a color variable or a color input to draw the actual line so to do that we're gonna declare a public color and i'm gonna call it line color so here in the start i'm gonna say gizmos dot color is equal to line color okay let's hit save and let's see if it works okay so right now we have a bunch of waypoints that are drawn between points but now we have a issue that the previous waypoint it's pointing to the center of the map now we want this vector 3 waypoint to connect to the last waypoint so back into our script we need another else if statement and this time we're gonna check if we are in the zero index so else if the i is equal to zero we're gonna tell it previous waypoint is equal to nodes in the index of nodes dot count minus one dot position now let's save that and go into our unity and now we have our last waypoint connecting to our first waypoint so now let's add in another waypoint and let's move it around we can see that it forms a loop between we can do that as many times as we want and that's how we create a loop between points now let's make a sphere appear in every uh, dot to do that we're gonna write gizmos dot draw sphere this also takes in two parameters. The first one is the current waypoint and the next one is the radius. Now for our radius parameter, we're gonna declare a range between zero and one. And I'm gonna call it public float sphere radius. And I'm gonna pass it down here. Let's hit save and go to our unity. Okay, so now I'm gonna increase radius and now we have spheres that appear in every point. 